Modern Warfare is here. So today I'm going to be covering the best settings, the best control settings, the best audio settings, something to just help you get your feet off of the ground. So let's get into the settings right here. So this is your menu. Obviously, you're going to press options. Now, by the way, these also work for Xbox as well. So if you're on Xbox, don't worry. This is also applicable to Xbox. The first thing you want to change is your button layout preset. So right here, I have it to tactical flip. The reason why is because in Modern Warfare, drop shotting is definitely the meta. Drop shotting, if you don't know what that is, is when your guy drops all the way down to the floor and he shoots at the same time. So being able to do this obviously is advantageous and it's gonna give you the upper hand in those gunfights because people don't expect you to drop all the way down to the floor when you're in a gunfight. Instead of using your circle button to crouch or go prone, it's using R3 to help you do that. So that means that you don't need to take your thumb off of the joystick just to be able to drop. You may be wondering what flipped is. So flipped is basically using your L1 and R1 buttons to be able to aim down sides and fire your weapon it's a lot more responsive it's instantaneous it's also a really great way to shoot enemies at a long distance because you can just tap on the r1 very swiftly like a pulsing type of movement that's why we call it a pulse fire or pop fire you know you're just tapping it rapidly instead of just pulling it down like you would on the trigger it will help give you a much more accurate shot from distance and in modern warfare the maps are all huge so this is going to be very crucial to help you get better accuracy stick layout is nothing i keep it default inverted lock i just kept that disabled because that's not my thing horizontal stick sensitivity so this is where this is my personal preference i do not want you guys to copy this if you want to find your best sensitivity i highly recommend you go into a private match play against some bots on recruit and then set your sensitivity to like say a 12 or something like that especially if you're new to call of duty this is something you need to do if your gun's all over the place bring it down a couple points then test it out again if it's too much for you bring it down a couple points then if it feels perfect for you just leave it there that's how you find your perfect sensitivity so now this one is where it gets a little bit more advanced so this is the ads sensitivity multiplier now this one is when you're aiming down sights and your cursor slows down while you're aiming down sights so this one's also important because if it's too high like if you set it all the way above like a one like this right here when you're aiming down your sights, you're going to find your weapon going everywhere and it's going to be hard to fine tune and adjust your accuracy with your right thumb. So that's why I recommend just again, going to a private match and finding what works for you. So for me, that is 0 0.80 sensitivity. And that's what I find to be my sweet spot as far as the ADS sensitivity goes. ADS sensitivity multiplier, don't worry about that unless you're a hardcore sniper person then this is something you want to tinker with. But for me personally, I just left it the way it was. Aim response curve type. So this is brand new to Call of Duty. We've never seen this before. You have standard, linear, and dynamic. Now, the reason why I left it at standard is because I did test out the other two. I felt linear was just way too sensitive for me personally and dynamic i didn't see much of a difference or anything like that but once i put it back to standard i was definitely winning a lot more gunfights and my shots were a lot more accurate you want to stick to standard you know why make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be especially when you're dealing with sensitivity here controller vibration i have that disabled number one it saves your battery from dying whether you're on xbox or ps4 we definitely don't want that happening and number two it helps you focus on the task at hand because you know your hands aren't rumbling or anything like that it allows you to just focus on the game without any distractions. So that's why I have controller vibration off. So this is under the weapons category. Aim assist is under focusing. Now, the reason why I picked focusing is because look at the description right here. It says strong aim slowdown that also kicks in when narrowly missing target. Best for players new to analog aiming. So if you're barely hitting your targets and you need help with that, focusing will help stick your cursor to the enemy a lot more frequently so that's why focusing can be helpful for somebody that's new to call of duty and even for somebody that's very well seasoned in call of duty such as myself focusing is kind of like a cheat code for you know an experienced call of duty player so focusing is something that you want to use for sure 
for weapon mount activation, we have ADS plus melee. Nothing special here. You just ADS and you press your melee button and it will mount your weapon around those corners. And then for the weapon mount movement exit, I have it disabled here just because I find it a lot more simpler to just release the ADS to unmount from it. Aim down sight behavior is hold. This is traditional in almost all of FPS shooters out there. Equipment behavior, same thing. Keep it on hold. Uh, use and reload behavior is tap to reload. Depleted ammo weapon switch is going to be enabled in case you run out of ammo and you don't realize it because you're in a gunfight or you're around a lot of enemies, you're panicking, you're freaking out. You will automatically switch to another weapon right then and there. This is definitely helpful if you're a beginner as well. Then for movement, we have slide behavior. I'm going to use tap right here. Vehicle camera recenter is enabled. I just left that default. Now moving on to general settings here. So input device is grayed out unless you're playing on keyboard and mouse it will be a different uh setting right there brightness mine is at 50 percent but if you're one of those people that have hard time seeing in the darkness then put the brightness up as needed modern warfare does have really dark maps out there and it's really hard to see enemies sometimes so you might want to put that brightness up safe area is also important you want to maximize it to the edges of your screen as much as possible because you don't want your heads up display to be in your way while you're in gunfights it could be distracting so that's just my personal take on that one that's why i just put the safe area where the arrows need to be which is at the very edge of my screen then for film grain we want to put this all the way down to zero you want everything to be crystal clear i have no idea why this is even a setting in the game to be honest with you uh, then for tooltips i have that enabled subtitles disabled language selection is english because that's my preferred language so just set it to whatever your language is uh, colorblind type so this one is important to me specifically because like i said it's a lot harder to see things in modern warfare you know the colors are a bit dull and it could result in seeing enemies a lot harder so that's why i put deuteranopia i think that's how you say it because i personally felt like these colors were the most vibrant and brightest out of all the other choices so we had tritonopia as another choice then we had protonopia and of course this is what it looks like disabled so for me personally i felt that deuteranopia was the best choice for me then interface is going to be my colorblind target right here because again it was the most colorful one in my eyes world motion blur this one's disabled i mean why would you want your game to look like that on the right side so that's just a no-brainer right there uh same thing right here weapon motion blur we have that disabled you want the game running and looking as smooth as possible man modern warfare is beautiful so why make it all blurry right now content fillers this is all just personal preference as well you know based on who you let play on your console or anything like that if you want to regulate some settings here then these are settings that you definitely want to tamper around with all right so audio this one's going to be a big one so audio now these settings are based around hearing footsteps a lot easier i'm big on that and in modern warfare it, you need to utilize every single thing that you can to have an advantage because the minimap just doesn't work the same as it used to. For starters, audio mix is going to be dynamic home theater. I did try out every single one as I was playing the game. And I personally found that dynamic home theater was the easiest to hear enemy footsteps. Now, uh, you know, some may argue that, you know, different modes are a lot better for them. But hey, man, this is just something that I picked myself. And what I hear might be different from what you hear. OK, because we all hear at different frequencies. Dynamic home theater is what I found to be the most optimal as far as hearing footsteps go. Master volume, we could keep that at 100. Now, this is important right here for hearing footsteps. Music volume, I put that all all the way down now the reason why is because it's that in-game music that comes up you know when you're playing team deathmatch or domination and then the music just decides to pop up out of nowhere let's say that you're on a streak and you want to just focus on those kills and what's going on in your environment you want to hear those footsteps and you can't do that if the music is playing all up in your ear so you want to put that all the way down to a zero Dialogue volume is going to be 100 because you want to be able to hear those call outs from those characters that are in the game. Because when you hear call outs, they say like, yo, enemy in the window, get to the chopper, come on, do it. You know, they, they say stuff like that. And you want to be able to figure out which direction that actually came from. And you want to turn and that's how you know where the enemies are. Okay, effects volume, I'm sure this categorizes footsteps under this category right here. So you want to keep the effects at 100 as well. Uh, juggernaut music, that's totally optional if you want to feel like a complete 
badass. This is definitely what you want to put enabled right here while you're using him. Hit marker sound effects. This is also optional, but I put on classic because I started off with Modern Warfare 2 and I do want to feel that nostalgic feel. So I put classic right there then voice chat this is all just hoopla you know it doesn't really matter right here for uh for voice chat all right so that's about it as far as settings go for your controller general and audio all right so that was it it's just a brief little video to get you guys started and up on your feet and ready to go i hope these settings you found very helpful and yeah if you guys want to see more videos like this don't forget to drop a like on it support the channel and subscribe if you're new around here because i am going to be covering modern warfare pretty extensively with different class setups and tips and tricks as well modern warfare is not an easy game by any means and i am here to help you figure it all out and give you the advantage against the opposition all right you guys so i will see you guys in the next video man peace yo what's going on guys if you guys are interested in watching me play live my twitch is in the description down below make sure to hit that follow button and i hope to see you there peace